Where does progress begin? Is it born out of wonder? Does it spring from curiosity? Is it driven by necessity? Or maybe it's the result of our relentless desire to be faster, smaller, better. What we don't always see is the path we take to get there. How we close the gap between what we can imagine and what we can create. And all the tests along the way. Progress, wherever it starts and wherever it leads, it's happening all around us. It's what brings us closer together gets us home safely and keeps the lights on. And when it's time to rise to the next great engineering challenge, who will answer the call? You and then I will. Chandran Nair, the Managing Director of National Instruments, Southeast Asia. Thank you, Ashish. Good morning to all of you, and welcome to NIDs 2014. It's my pleasure on behalf of NI to have all of you here. As Ashish mentioned, you and NI have accomplished a lot over the past few decades. Your vision and hard work has brought in over hundreds of thousands of product to market. At times, you have encountered really difficult problems. And with NI and our tools, we have helped bridge the gap between your imagination and what can be brought to the market. We see our role to work with you to be able to provide systems platforms that enable you to deploy your ideas to market. Through your imagination and vision, you have harnessed the energy of the wind for clean energy. You have been able to reduce the time and cost of tests so that we can all use wireless data easily. You have also, some of you have also, using our tools, controlled the world's largest particle accelerator. In the coming years, you and I will work together to figure out how to solve the challenges involved in creating the Internet of Things. All these years in human history have been marked with great inventions and innovations. All the way from the abacus to steam-powered engines to electricity, and then as you can see, as we've gotten closer and closer to the present day, the number of innovations and the pace of progress has been so fast. In fact, the futurologist, uh, Ray, I cannot pronounce his last name, excuse me for that, has uh, said that the progress in the 21st century will proceed at 1,000 times greater than in the 20th century. Already many of the greatest innovations were invented during our lifetime. And now we are set for even a faster rate of progress. We are in one of the most exciting times in history, not only because we are a part of that history observing it, but as engineers and scientists, you and those of us at NI are a part of creating these innovations. Now, it's exciting to be on one side, but there are challenges on the other. How exactly do we keep pace with this fast rate of progress? Well, at NI, we have made it our job to be able to enable systems that help you accelerate your productivity, your innovation, and your discovery. So as we move forward, you and NI will create systems to solve the Internet of Things. 
Now for the Internet of Things, there we have identified five technologies that really drive the Internet of Things. First, of course, is the Moore's Law. Over the past few decades, the Moore's Law has guided us to create faster processors, cheaper, and putting millions of transistors on less than a fraction of an inch of silicon. This has enabled tremendous progress. The next technology, really, is Metcalfe's Law, whereby for every node you put on the network, every extra node you put on the network, it really doubles the value of the network. Which means, as we continue to put on nodes, the value of the network increases so much, it gives us tremendous insight into many of the challenges we face. In fact, depending on the source you read, either we have already reached or we will, will soon reach the number of connected nodes that will, be, that will surpass the number of human beings on our planet. The third driving technology is battery life. The chemists have worked very hard to be able to increase battery life to increase the power in a smaller footprint so that we can work away from the power grid for longer periods of time on our devices. The fourth impacts also our da daily life, wireless technology. The rate at which wireless infrastructure has surpassed wired infrastructure because we can go places which we could never go with wired technology. And with things like LTE where you get over 100 megabit per second throughput, we are now able to do tremendous amounts of things using wireless technology. And the last, but not the least, in this uh, driver for Internet of Things is sensors. You have all kinds of sensors that are readily available at very low, low price, whether it's temperature, whether it's strain, whether it's pressure, whether it's uh, uh, imaging, all these different kinds of sensors are now available cheaply and integrated easily. So when you look at it, the five driving technologies are Moore's Law, Metcalfe's Law, battery life, wireless and sensor technology that really create the Internet of Things. At National Instruments, we look at Internet of Things really in two broad categories. One is the industrial Internet of Things, and the other is the consumer Internet of Things. And National Instruments plays a part in both. On the consumer side of Internet of Things, we are very involved in testing the devices that you create. On the industrial side of Internet of Things, we are very involved in creating the electronics and the software required to create the Internet of Things in the industrial space. Now, in the consumer Internet of Things, it's at the micro level. We have devices that are wearable. We have devices that control our temperatures in our houses. The consumer Internet of Things involves having devices in our car that can work with, say, the parking system, that can tell you if there's a parking space available in a particular lot ahead of time, that can communicate with your car or your mobile device. And then when we go to the industrial Internet of Things, of course, there are the macro level, machine to machine level, smart factory level, maybe even smart city level. So for example, it is things like having freight liners equipped with the Internet of Things that help get the best route, that help reduce the fuel consumption on things like, this is a beautiful photograph by the way, wind turbines. The Internet of Things help us in remote areas decide if something is going to go wrong because we're continuously monitoring it. So that before it breaks down and you spend a lot of time and money on downtime and on repair, you are able to take action on these remote systems. And then of course, the way we live today in dense urban environment, in large sporting events. And now with the industrial Internet of Things, we have to make sure that the wireless infrastructure and technology can handle these large amounts of data. 
you and, and I will create the Internet of Things. How my identity has come to be with an I. <laughs> As we move forward, what National Instruments does is we provide platforms that help you design, deploy, test, prototype, test, deploy, and monitor systems, both in the industrial space and in the consumer space, using this paradigm, what we call graphical systems design. Our founder and CEO, Dr. Trishad, says it all begins with academic. We are very, very proud of our role in academic because we see it as our responsibility to ensure that the innovators of the future, the engineers and scientists of the future, have the systems and tools required to meet the challenges of the future. What exactly are the challenges of the future? We need people who don't only know how to use tools, but really have a system thinking approach to solving the future challenges of the world. And that is what National Instruments is working with in the academic space. Just to make a case in point, let's look at systems. Simple system. All of you recognize this. The same system today is not so simple. In order to be able to contribute at this level, we need the innovators of tomorrow to think systems. We need system level design engineers. Let's take another one, the Model T. For those of us who love cars like I do, fantastic innovation. If we asked Henry Ford about microprocessors, it was invented way after his lifetime he would not have seen the correlation between a microprocessor and a car. But look at the car today. This is the sports version of the Tesla, the electric, uh, the electric car Tesla. It has over 200 microprocessors on board. The kind of engineering talent required to design these products requires system level thinking, require a set of tools that can help do system level design. And that is what graphical system design is about. How do we prepare our students to address these kinds of systems? In the past, we thought we taught with a blackboard and chalk. It hasn't changed very much. Are we really preparing the students, the innovators of tomorrow, the engineers of tomorrow, the scientists of tomorrow, to be prepared to deal with this complex system level world? Well, at NI, we think about this all the time. And the only way we think we can move forward successfully is what we say by do engineering. There is no other way. Let me talk a little bit about what this really means. We put in a lot of effort in system level design and platform thinking. For those of you who know us pretty well, you can see this timeline from your left to the right, all the way from the primary, secondary school level up to being a professional engineer. We have developed a common platform of systems that enable you to innovate so that children can explore, can tinker on things like the Lego Mindstorm, which uses National Instruments Labio. As they grow to do more, as they grow to become young ad adolescents, they have the tools, the same set of tools that enable them to do more, to tinker more and learn complex ideas in their subject matter. And then as they become professionals, it is the same thinking and the same set of tools that they progress into so that they are familiar. One of the largest reasons why students don't become engineers is because we have found, through our traditional education system, a very effective way of killing curiosity and killing innovation. And the main reason that happens is because they are always subject to different kinds of tools at different stages, and they don't understand why they have to learn all these different things. When you have a common set of tools, when you have a common system, a common platform, 
when they know how to connect blocks, they are encouraged to do more and in the, and in the process learn more as they implement. And National Instruments has spent a lot of time in figuring out a common platform that is used all the way from the kindergarten through Lego, to Lego Mindstorm, all the way into research and industry. And this methodology has been now widely accepted by leading players, many universities, many schools, the World Robotics, Olympiad, Lego, and so on. Because this is a sustainable approach to helping students keep their interest in science, in technology, and in innovation. Over four million students use the National Instruments Systems platforms. We have four million future system designers today. And we worked to look at these needs of the system designers, and we could not find any platform out in the market that was effective. So we created what we call MyRio that you see up on the stage that has the Rio technology, reconfigurable IO technology, along with LabVIEW that students can use to put their systems design project to work and use these same ideas as they go into industry or entrepreneurship. So in the last one year since this has been released, over 65 countries, over 800 universities, over 20,000 students are implementing system design projects using the MyRio. So we take the responsibility of creating innovators of the future very seriously. A part of this innovation and help and making sure that the economies we work in are prepared, we also work a lot with small and medium enterprises. We ensure that our technology is available to the students, is available to, to, uh, to innovators, and, av and available to entrepreneurs in the technology space. In Singapore, we work very closely with a number of organizations, including Spring. In fact, we have something called a Pact Manager, that somebody called a Pact Manager, that works very closely with SMEs in order to help up upskill their talent and to help them bring ideas and product to market quicker. We also have a program called Planet NI across the emerging markets that we work with entrepreneurs who want to create a difference in society using technology. Now, the, the uh, American Academy of Engineers, they really categorized the future challenges as 14 grand challenges and categorized in the, them in four major areas, in health, sustainability, security, and joy of living. Right? In these four major categories is what you, those of you who teach the future innovators, and those of you who are still young enough to be future innovators, all of us are very young, right? To, to be able to progress, to make an engineer better medicines, to be able to get cleaner forms of energy through fusion and other methods, to be able to work with existing and new infrastructure to make sure we restore and improve the way we monitor our, uh, our infrastructure. And finally, to understand our own bodies and our mind better so that we can learn how the brain works. To do this, the future innovators will have to think systems. And we consider our role as an important part in enabling systems that will accelerate productivity, innovation, and discovery. So on that note, you and I will create the future. Thank you.